A lunar eclipse is something quite mystical. Now imagine a photo of a lunar eclipse with the ancient pyramids of Egypt. Would it be awesome? Is it possible? Will it happen? Let's figure it out! Hello photopillers, Rafael the bar here. Today I'm going to show you how to use photopills to plan a photo of January 21st, 2019 total lunar eclipse with the ancient pyramids of Giza in Cairo, Egypt. And we start right now. The pyramids of Mankuya, Khafra and Khufu, the tallest one, are all very, very old. They were built more than 4,500 years ago to house the remains of the deceased pharaohs. The ancient Egypts believed that death on earth was the start of a journey to the next world. So the mummified body of the dead pharaoh was entombed within the pyramid or underneath it to protect it and to allow his ascension to the afterlife. Now close your eyes for a second and imagine a photo of a total lunar eclipse with these magnificent structures, the ancient pyramids of Egypt. Let's plan it with photopills. So go to photopills and tap on planner. Planning the photo means to find the right shooting spot and the right shooting data and time. I can shoot the total lunar eclipse with the pyramids. And these are the seven steps to plan the photo. Step one, place the red pin in the location. The red pin you see on the map represents the shooting location. So always, always, always the first thing is to place the red pin on the location I'm gonna plan the shot. In this case, the Giza Pyramids complex. To do it, just tap on the load button and then type the name of the location on the search uh, bar at the top. In this case, I'm gonna type Giza Pyramids and see the result. Here it is, Great Pyramid of Giza. Tap on the result and the red pin will be placed on that spot, in this case, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Zooming out, I see, have a better view of the complex with the pyramids and the awesome, always awesome Sphinx of Giza. A beautiful, beautiful spot. Here it is. Step 2. Select the eclipse. I'm planning the January 21st, 2019 lunar eclipse, so I have to select it with the planner. To do it, tap on the map settings button on the map and then look for the eclipse map layer. Here it is. Tap on eclipse. As you see here, there are many, many, many solar and lunar eclipses to come. Is there any eclipse you wish me to plan? Let me know, just comment below. Let me see. And here it is, the January 21st, 2019 lunar eclipse. Tap on it to select it. Where are you? Here. Now, to switch on the information of the eclipse on the map, I have to tap on the eye you see next to the eclipse layer. Tap on it, and then tap on done to go back to the map. Step 3. Understand the eclipse information. This is key. Once you've selected the eclipse you want to plan with the planner, it is key to understand how the information of the eclipse is displayed on the time bar, on the map, and on the top panels, on the panels above the map. So you know when and where each phase of the eclipse will occur. This will allow you to adjust the shooting time with the time bar and also to adjust the red pin position until you find the right shooting spot for the composition you want. Let's have a look at the planner now, a few things have changed. First, the date has been set to the eclipse date, January 21st, 2019, and the time has been set to 7.13 am in the morning, it's when the eclipse is maximum. Pay attention to the picture of the moon you see on the top panel above the map, it's a full moon, but it's a special full moon. The yellow circumference that you see means that this full moon is a supermoon. A supermoon is when a full moon is closest to Earth and it appears a little bit larger in the photos. Zoom out to see the eclipse info on the map. Here we have it. Now you see the areas of the world where the eclipse is not visible at all. This is in uh, almost all Asia and Oceania. Then you have the areas where some of the faces of the lunar eclipse are visible around Moonset. This is Europe, Middle East, Africa, and yeah, Egypt. Cool! Also, you have 
the areas on the wall where the clips is visible. All the pieces of the clips are visible. This is in the Americas, North America, uh, Central America, and South America. And finally, you have the areas of the wall where some of the faces of the clips are visible around moonrise. This is mainly in the Pacific Ocean. To see the clips' faces that are visible from a particular location, swipe the top panels, the panels you see above the map, to the left until you get to the second eclipse panel, this one. This panel shows the faces of the clips that are visible from the red pin position. In this case, I have it in Giza, in Egypt. It also shows the faces of the clips that are not visible from the red pin position. And finally, it also shows in a larger picture the face of the clips for the selected date and the selected time, in this case at 7.13 a.m. in the morning. For example, if I move the red pin to, let's say, France, you see how the panel adjusts. Now, almost all the faces of the clips are visible, but the one. And if I move it, for example, let's say to USA, you see how in this area, in that spot in particular, all the faces of the clips are visible. Pretty cool. But let's go back to Egypt. The smart way to do it is by tapping on the plus button you see in the map and then use the undo button to go back to the previous position, put the red pin on the previous position. I tap it, I tap the undo button until I get to the previous position which was in here in Giza, Egypt. Now, if I want to delete the under button that's uh, on the map now, I just have to do a long press on the button and drag it to the plus. And that's it. Now that we are back to Giza, let me zoom in on the map a little bit. The thick dark blue line you see appearing from the red pin is telling me the direction where the moon will be setting on January 21st. And if I change time, you see that a second blue line appears, a thinner one. This line is telling me the direction where the moon is going to be on the selected date, January 21, and the selected time. This thin blue line is key because it's telling me where the clips will happen, in the directions the clips will be happening. Also, the big picture of the clips that you see on the top panel is super useful because it's showing me how the clips evolves through time. So I know at all time the face of the clips that I'll have. At this point of the planning, if you just wish to photograph the faces of the lunar eclipse without including a foreground, you're done! You're done with the planning! Now you know exactly when the eclipse is happening and where, so you can go and capture all the faces of the eclipse. But if you want to include a foreground, for example in this case the pyramids, you'll have to go over a few more steps, so let's continue! Step 4. Look for a shooting spot. Now that I know where the moon is gonna be during the eclipse, I can start looking for my shooting spot. I just look at the area, I know that at 6.23 uh, am the eclipse is gonna happen in the direction of this blue thin line, and I'm gonna look for a shooting spot, let's say more or less around here in this road, the road that goes to the pyramids, and from this spot I see that the eclipse is happening between the, ma the two main uh, pyramids. Pretty cool. I like it. When I'm playing shots from home, I like to use Google Maps and Google Street View to have a better understanding of the location. I also look at photos uh, on internet to understand the location. Understanding the location is key to plan the shot. So let's go to have a look at Google Maps to have a better understanding of the view of the pyramids. So I'm here in Google Maps and I'm gonna grab the, the yellow man here and drop it on the location I've chosen for this shot and see what we have from this location. So as you see, it's pretty cool, huh? Here in this case, I'm gonna have the two pyramids and the eclipse happening just right in the middle of the two uh, pyramids, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Also notice that in this case, the terrain goes up. So next step is super important. Step five, check the terrain elevation. 
As you see, the train goes up towards the pyramids. So next step is to check if the cliffs will be visible above the terrain. To figure out, I have to compare the elevation of the terrain with the elevation of the moon at the time of the eclipse. In this case, it's at 6.23 am. So swap the top panels to the right until you get to the pin-to-pin -pin geodetic panel, this panel. Tap on the icon of the mountains you see on the panel and a black pin will appear. Now all I have to do is to play, place the black pin right on the blue thin azimuth line the one that's telling me where the eclipse is happening and read on the top panel the altitude difference this is uh, the elevation of the terrain in this case at this spot the uh, altitude difference is 3 degrees point uh, 38 so if I keep moving the black pin I'm gonna see how this elevation changes and now it's 390 degrees this is going up 417 degrees going up 454 degrees going up 483 5 532 491 so it's going down again in this case the slope top of the hill is 5 uh, 12 from this spot. This is the top of the hill of this location. So I need to make sure that the moon is above 512 degrees. To find the elevation of the moon, swipe left to the next panel. On this panel, I have the estimate and the elevation of the sun and the moon for the selected date and time. For example, here, uh, this panel is telling me that the moon at 6.23 a.m. in the morning is uh, 537. If you want to see the elevation of the terrain, tap on the blood pin and this information box also contains the elevation difference, the altitude difference, 5.1 degrees. In this case, the elevation of the moon is higher than the elevation of the terrain, therefore the eclipse will be visible. Good! If I move time forwards, see what happens. The azimuth line on the moon, the thin blue line, now is dashed. This means that the center of the moon is below the terrain. This way, just by looking at the map, I know that the terrain is hiding the moon. Step 6. Check the type of natural light. The type of natural light you'll have in the scene is key. It's not the same to shoot the eclipse during the golden hour, during the blue hour, during daytime or during nighttime. If you wish to match the natural light, and leave me a link to our guide understanding golden hour, blue hour and twilight in the description, so go and check it out. In this case, at 6.23 am, the top panel is telling me that the sun elevation is minus 6.41 degrees. This is almost the end of the nautical twilight and almost the beginning of the blue hour. In the morning, the blue hour begins when the sun is at minus 6 degrees of elevation below the horizon. And the golden hour begins when the sun is at minus 4 degrees below the horizon. So if I swipe the time bar to change the time, and I pay attention to the elevation of the sun during the eclipse, I can conclude that the eclipse will be happening in this location during the blue hour and during golden hour. This is awesome light to shoot the moon. It's an awesome light to shoot the lunar eclipse because the moon will have such a powerful color and you'll be able to correctly expose in one single shot both the moon, the eclipse and the pyramids. Awesome light conditions! Step 7. Compare the size of the moon compared to the pyramids. The easiest way to figure out how big will be the moon compared to the pyramids is to switch on the moon size on the map. To do it, just tap on the map settings button and then tap on moon and here you need to switch on show moon size. Tap on show moon size, tap on done and now if I zoom on the azimuth line of the moon, on the blue line, you see that this line now is showing me the size of the moon how big the moon will be compared to the pyramids. In this case, as you see, the pyramids are huge and the moon will be pretty small. 
the closest you are to the pyramids, the smaller will be the moon. The further away you are from the pyramids, the larger the moon will appear in the photo compared to the pyramids. Yes, how big the moon will appear compared to the pyramids only depends on one thing, the shooting distance. This is the distance from the shooting spot to the pyramids, nothing more. It does not depend on focal length, it only depends on shooting distance, on distance. In this case, the shooting distance is pretty close to the pyramids, so the moon appears to be pretty small compared to the pyramid. And if you want to know the size of the moon in meters or feet, just apply the Fallopil's rule of 100. The Fallopil's rule of 100 says to calculate the size of the moon you'll have in the photo compared to your subject, all you have to do is to divide the shooting distance by 100. I repeat, just divide the shooting distance by 100 and you'll have the size of the moon compared to your subject. And what's the size of the moon in this example? Let's use the black pin to calculate the shooting distance. Place the black pin just here between the two pyramids. The top panel is telling me that the shooting distance, this is the distance between the red pin and the black pin, the distance between the shooting spot and the pyramids, is uh, more or less 500 meters, 518 meters, more or less 1600 feet. And if I divide 500 meters by 100, I'm getting the size of the moon, 5 meters in this case, or 16 feet. The moon will be pretty small compared to the giant pyramids. So a wide angle lens will work, or also a slightly longer lens if you want to shoot a panorama. Well, I've just planned the shot. Now I know that if I go to the red pin position to the shooting spot on January 21st, 2019, at 6.23 a.m. in the morning, I'll be able to photograph the lunar eclipse happening with the pyramids, which is pretty awesome. I have bad news. Yes, I've just planned a cool shot of the lunar eclipse with the pyramids, but the shooting spot is inside the pyramids complex and the doors open at 8 a.m. in the morning. Way after the lunar eclipse, the shooting time is at 6.23 a.m. in the morning. What I've done! The solution here is to find a shooting spot outside the pyramids complex and above the wall of the complex too. So after a quick search in booking.com I found a few options. The Sphinx guest house, the Guardian guest house and the Panorama Pyramids Inn. All great places to enjoy the lunar eclipse with the pyramids. Let's have a look at the shot from the Sphinx guest house. I know by looking at booking.com that the guest house is over here, so I'll place the red pin right there where the guest house is according to booking.com and let me see the alignment with the eclipse and the pyramids awesome yeah I'm getting the shot from here it's pretty cool from this shooting spot I'm gonna have the eclipse in between the two main pyramids of uh, Giza pretty amazing shot so yeah, this place works. As I told you, there are a lot of hotels uh, around this area where you can enjoy the eclipse and the pyramids. So nothing can stop you. And that's it. This is how you can plan the lunar eclipse with photo pills. I'm gonna put a link to the plan of the photo in the description of the video so you can import it onto photo pills. So you can go and capture it. And if you wish to learn how to photograph a lunar eclipse, I'm also leaving the link to our guide of best lunar eclipses, when, where and how to shoot them in the description of this video. Go check it out! Now tell me, what would you like me to plan next? Comment below, suggest a location, suggest a photo idea that you have and you want me to plan for you, suggest anything you want. And if you go and capture the photo I've just planned with the lunar eclipse and the pyramids of Giza, let me know, that would be legendary! I'm waiting for your comments. In the next video, I'm gonna plan a cool shot of the Milky Way. Don't miss it. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified when I release it. See you next video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan and shoot legendary photos. Bye.